You talk about a godforsaken place. This is it. Very little here but tumbleweed and bad sand. People got to be crazy to come out here to look for gold. I must be getting old. I came up here. This is north of a government facility, a missile range. You know, I got in trouble one time when I was down south by the Mexican border saying how remote it was. Well, this is remote, but it's not. The, some guy commented and said, well, you know, I think he said Alaska or Antarctica. So I'll qualify this. This is remote for down here. I mean, it, this is a place that's kind of, it's just a long ways to get to. And there's nothing out here. There's a couple ranches and that's it. And then the government facility and that, that line is right up there on top. So I left this morning pretty early. I got out there, you know, something I'm getting tired of is, is, is trying to catch these mules in the morning. I, I went out there and of course you got a headlamp on. Oh, and I need to say, uh, you know, Olight sent me the flashlight a long time ago, real nice one, and gave me a code, gave me the flashlight and gave me a code, said, try it out and then tell your, uh, uh, your audience or on your YouTube videos, they can use this code and they can save some money. And then it also helps me out a little bit. Well, they, I guess some people clicked on it and they wrote me another email back and asked me, said, do you want another flashlight? And I said, you know what I really need is I need a big heavy duty flashlight, something that has a real good floodlight on it or spotlight on it too. Something that I can, uh, for this summer when I'm going on these pack trips and everything, I can use that. And they sent me this one. It's really, really wicked. So here, I'll show you a little bit of it right here when I was out, uh, trying to catch the mules, which I'm getting really tired of. You can see how bright this thing is. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, it's nice they gave it to me. So here's a code. You can use the code. I don't remember it right now, but I'll put it right here. And you save, I don't know, maybe 10%, 20%, something like that. And you help out the channel. Anyway, I loaded up Brenda and, and uh, Ruthless Ruth and drove on out here. You know, you cut across a big old flat. They call it the Jornado del Muerto, the journey of death. Got loaded up. Headed out. Onward and upward. That's the watchword. You know, I always try to walk for about 30 minutes in the morning. And then it's good for these mules, you know, if they have any kinks in them or anything, they're a lot less likely to throw a fit when you get on them. And gosh darn it. Me and Ruth had a big old argument this morning when we got, when I was trying to catch her. So every now and then she just gets a bug in her brain and, and she acts like an idiot. So when I was going through the gate down there, she decided she didn't want to go to the gate. And when I tried to pull her through, she sat back and yanked the rope away from me. So then I lost Brenda too. So then I had to go catch uh, Ruth. Oh, 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 it's okay, oh, oh, oh. I got Ruth caught and then I had to go try to catch Brenda. And Brenda wasn't really, she not, it wasn't like she was trying to get away from me. She just wanted to get back to the truck. She was, it wasn't like she was really scared of me. I'm gonna go up on top up there, try to get up on top and then circle back around this way. When I get up there, there's a good story. A good, I, I really didn't have a destination this morning. You know, a lot of times I've, I've heard about some petroglyphs or I've heard about an old, you know, Billy the Kid's hideout or Geronimo's cave or something I wanna go to. But this has a pretty, I just realized that this has a pretty good story to it. Not right here, but probably about 10 miles as a crow flies from right here. Probably one of the most famous treasure stories in the United States is right here, not 10 miles from me. I can't go to it. I can't get to the mountain because of uh, it's on the military reservation. When I get up on top, I'll tell you all the story about it. And, and uh, maybe we can look over there and we can actually see the peak. I don't know if you can from here or not, but it's possible, I guess. Gold fever. Once you've got it, you're hooked for life. It's incurable, they say. And nothing excites gold fever faster than tales of buried treasure or lost gold mines of outlaws loot hidden in mountain caves. It's the old dream of something for nothing. Tonight, the story of the hidden treasure of a man named Milton Ernest Noss. Anyway. 
Guys, I'm gonna travel on up this mountain now. See what I can find. got steep on me. I'm trying to top out right here because that bottom of that canyon just kept getting brushier and butt brushier. It's not that bad. I mean it's steep but they can do it as long as you stop and give them you know give them a breather let them catch their air go a little ways kind of you know zigzag hit a zigzag and go zigzagging up and down or across and this is what this is like a little old what would you call it? Like a little ridge, or not a ridge, but a, a slope that comes down. So, it's not bad. Catch your breath, Brenda. No. All right, here we go. What you call a false summit. I thought that was the top, but the top's not until way up there. That's okay. I'm where I want to be. And that doesn't look near as steep as what I just came up. Mules might not be as anxious to walk away from me now. They're a little more tired. There's a ranch house right down there. And then if you look way over there, you'll see the white sands. One of these peaks in here, heck, it could be that one. I don't know. One of them is Victoria Peak. And it's the one that has the legend that there's, there's caverns in it. They proved that there's big caverns in it. And, and well, I'll show you some of this video. This is where Doc Noss said he discovered the gold. Not a gold mine, you understand, but a cavern deep in a mountain, deep in the San Andres Mountains of southern New Mexico. A cavern where there were gold bricks stacked up like cordwood, and ancient golden artifacts, and 27 human skeletons tied to posts. More gold than you can imagine down deep inside the mountain at the end of a narrow 300 foot long tunnel. You could only descend climbing hand over hand on a rope. The entrance to Doc Noss's fabulous cavern of gold is supposed to be somewhere around this old abandoned mine shaft. And they did ground penetrating radar and said that there was, you know, 400 feet down, there was like these big caverns. Well, there's this guy and everybody said he was a con man. He, he, his name was Don, Donald Noss, Doc Noss, Doc Noss, Milton Doc Noss. And he had a practice in tier C and he was a, I guess a foot doctor, a, a, what do they call it? A podi podiatrist, is that right? Anyway, he was out here deer hunting and uh, he stumbled on this cavern. And it had some old ladders going down in it, I guess, or whatever. And he went down there in the bottom of it and found there was gold in there. Bricks of gold stacked like cordwood. And then there was old Spanish artifacts, you know, swords and, and chalices and silver. And then there was also like these posts. And they said there was like 20 skeletons tied to these posts where, some, where they looked like they'd just been tied and left to die. 
Anyway, he had a hard time getting these bricks out of here, or out of there. And uh, let me see if I got the story right. Anyway, he recruited some help from this guy, some Texan. But anyway, it was hard getting those bricks of, of gold out of there. They were heavy, you know, and it was a long ways down there, and you'd have to carry them out on his back. So they even set up a, uh, what do they call it, a thing with a little, where they could pull it in and out. Got a dog barking over there. Anyway, his part, he, they blasted trying to widen out the entrance to the cavern, and it caved it in. And then, I don't think it was very long after that, his partner shot him dead there in Hatch. So then, but they said that the reason he got shot is that before he left, he, he took 51 of those bars out and hit them somewhere out here. So there's been lots of people looking at, looking for them. A lot of people say they're over there in the Caballo Mountains. Some people say they're out there in those flats. Well, you've seen what those flats are like. They could be anywhere. They'd be hard to find. But it's a pretty cool story. I, if I find anything else, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Now I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there and uh, find, a, find a place to have lunch. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know how far over the military boundary is. You'd think there'd be a fence, huh? <laughs> I used to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how I could get out there without getting in trouble. Because it, it's, it's closed off. The, the military won't let you out there. You got to have permission. I wonder how many people they've caught sneaking out there. Because I bet you there's been quite a few. The lure of gold. <laughs> it gets in my blood too. Could you imagine finding gold bars stacked like cordwood? Now they said it was 60% gold. And they had it assayed. And, you know, and a lot of people say it's just a, uh, he was a con man. And it's possible he was. I don't know. But it's sure nice to think about it. Look at all this country. if we can find a place down out of this wind and I brought a steak I love to cook a steak while I'm out like this build me a little fire give me a steak going mm -hmm. but I need to be out of the wind there's a lot of grass up here it's all right it's all right I just had to get out I mean I had to go someplace different I felt like going someplace different and this is different. I like it. I wish that missile range was open to us. Man, you could take a pack mule, and if you knew where the water was, you could make some big old circles in there. There's no, you might be able to find more gold.
take a pack mule, you can carry some of these little things that make it easier, make it a little more comfortable. The grill, the little table, try to keep things up and off the ground. I'll put a link to all these in the description down below because I bought all these on Amazon. The table, the grill, you know, when you get someplace like this and you know there's, you assume there's nobody for miles and miles around. Not many people even come into this area, but it, it's just a, it's a peaceful feeling, I guess, is what it is. I get a lot of criticism by, you know, family and stuff about going by myself. But what do they say? He who goes alone waits for no one. And, you know, not that I'm always in a hurry, but when I want to go, I want to go. Well enough to me. Oi, 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 oi. Yes, sir. It's nice to have a table. No. Oh, that's perfect. A piece of bark makes a pretty good plate. So after eating my steak, cooked on an open fire, put some water on the fire to make sure it was out, watered the dog some more. Stirred it a little bit. Kicked dirt over it. Can't be too careful out here because it sure is dry. The mules were in a lot better frame of mind after climbing that hill and, and riding all that way. They weren't near as boogery or thinking I might get after them. I started gathering up my stuff to pack it up to get out of there. You know, as I rode out, I thought, man, this would be a good area. Some of these saddles or these trails, these little game trails, to put some game cameras out. After all, I did see a lot of critter sign, if you know what I mean. And I had some dogs bark a couple times. up there on the top and then we rode the top all the way around back down through here it's not a bad circle really it's pretty good climbing out over there was pretty tough but we did it I don't know how how tough it's going to be going down here but we can do it got all this cat claw in here Where you been? Where have you been, buddy? Did you get lost? Did you get lost? How far? Let's see. I'm saying about nine and a half, ten and a half miles. Trip computer. Oh no. It's only seven miles. must be getting old <laughs> it feels like ten and a half miles <laughs> ah jeez.